Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 2020 ISC Web Conference on African Common. My name is Sylvain Effio, PhD student in agronomic science. My communication is about socio-economic implication of crop raiding around Penjari Biosphere Reserve in Northern Benin. The outline of my communication includes introduction, methodology, results and discussion, and conclusion. Socio-ecological system, a coherent system of interdependent and the interacting ecosystem and human communities. Human communities' interaction with the ecological environment can be positive or negative. Positive interaction or ecosystem service refers to the benefit that human societies derive from nature. On the other hand, the negative interaction of human communities with the environment takes into account, among other things, the problematic relations of a local population with wildlife. We focus our communication on crop raiding, the most important form of human wildlife conflict in Africa and around the Penya Biosphere Reserve. We examine the extent and impact of crop raiding by wildlife in Penjari Biosphere Reserve. Penjari Biosphere Reserve comprises Penjari National Park, Penjari and Concombre Hunting Zone, and a buffer zone with control land use access for local population. Agriculture and breeding are the main activities of the local population surrounding the Penjari Biosphere Reserve. Data on crop raiding were collected through field observation, substituted interview and questionnaire survey of 209 farmers between January and February 2017. Data were analyzed using SPSS and descriptive statistics were used to describe crop raiding. The results showed that cotton, maize and sorghum are the main crop destroyed by wild, wild, wildlife and the main red were baboon, waterhog and elephant. Cotton, maize and sorghum were also the crop identified by Togo and all 2017 and Dosu and all 2019 as the main crop destroyed by Popotam respectively in the Mono Delta Transboundary Biosphere Reserve in southwest Benin and along the Weme River in central Benin. Like in Cameroon, baboon, waterhog, elephant, and bird were the most important crop depredator. Elephant, which are usually considered as the most important threat to crops, were not the first raider around Penja Biosphere Reserve. River in the north of Benin in the southwest and in the central Benin, the main crops destroyed were cereal and cotton. This indicates the crop raiding threatening household food security and the, and the economic security since Benin, since Benin is a the leading produce, producer of cotton in Africa. Farmers can lose annually 
from 1994 US dollar in sorghum farm to 311 in cotton farm. See table 1. If this cost seem minimal or even insignificant at the national and international level, it constitutes a heavy tribute paid by poor, poor population living near protected areas who live on less than a dollar a day. To reduce the impact of crop raising, farmers develop some strategies to cope with crop, de crop des 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 destruction, such as scarecrow, fire, and trap. The, the oldest and uh, the most widely used deterrence method in the Pendjari Biosphere Reserve is guarding and it seems to be the, the most effective human wildlife conflict management measure. It, it is efficiency is however limited against nocturnal depredators as it is difficult to guard farm during the night. The heavy toll of human wildlife conflict and the low level, level of effectiveness of measures to reduce crop raiding theory reveal the vulnerability of agricultural household bordering protecting areas. In conclusion, we can say that this study of crop raiding around Penya Biosphere Reserve revealed that cotton Maize and sorghum are the crops that are the most damaged by the human wildlife conflicts. The main animal responsible of, uh, for this destruction are the baboon, the waterhog, and uh, the elephant. Crop raiding brings about economic and social impact on populations surrounding protecting areas and makes them vulnerable. Variability here refers to the degree to which farm, farm households are exposed to the risk of damage from wild animals combined with the individual and collective abilities to deal with damage. Despite a very abundant literature on human wildlife conflict, few studies have addressed the vulnerability of household. Assessing the vulnerability of a local resident to human wildlife conflict makes it possible to approach the question from an holistic perspective so as to develop a durable solution for the socio-ecological system as a whole. Thank you for your kind attention.